Would you like to comment on the piece that's uh, beside you on the left side? So I did a series of these. In uh, 1970, I went to graduate school. I didn't know I was going to graduate school, but I went to Mexico because I didn't want to be, I realized that if I was going to be a public school teacher, I always say I'd be a 700 pound alcoholic. And anybody who's been a teacher in public school knows what I mean. Especially, we can leave it there, folks. Especially now since uh, the classes are even larger and they're talking about allowing teachers to bring guns into school. So I went to graduate school and then I started my sojourn wandering through Central and South America. My mother's needle and thread has always been my ticket, my license, because everybody sews. I went to Panama, I don't remember, but it was in the 70s. And she calls it reverse applique, but free, it's called mola work by many people. But it is reverse applique because the mola is actually the blouse, but it's called mola work. And I went there with my molas, and my needle and thread, and my gappy teeth. I actually look like a big, I look like the kuna, or the name of the people, I look like a big kuna. And um, I sat and beaded with them, and I sat and did uh, mola work with them. And I just sat there. This is before lots of um, mm -hmm. tourists came. I was with somebody that I met in graduate school, and we traveled the world together. And that has been my like raison d'etre mm -hmm. to just go somewhere and ply my trade because I'm not supposed to have it if I'm not sharing it. Mm -hmm. So this is from a whole series about the responsibility of us for the future and the life of the kids in the future. So that's what this whole series is about. I'd like to turn your attention to this is this your piece? Yes. Would you like to uh, give some commentary about it? In 2011, I think it was, I was asked to be in the Prospect 2 Biennale in New Orleans. And one of the things I got to do was go to a glass studio. Inferno. Inferno. I met these guys. And Pilchuck in Washington State. They were very funny. I met him at a at the end at the party and he had on, you know, a costume and a weird. So I went to one of the things I got to do was have a, a minor residency at his studio. And in PC is a figure that is a power font. That's what it is for me. From it, people ask for things to be done or they give offerings to it. Is that right, Leslie? And so, because you know, I'll say one thing and Leslie's like this. That is not what any feast is. You don't even say the problem. This is your show, I'm not getting it. I don't it. want to beat me up in lunch or nothing. <laughs> so I make a lot of these power pieces because after being in Central and South America and seeing going to many Catholic churches and seeing all of these large saints who are dressed, because many times you'll dress in PC, and have things pinned onto them or motives or requests left at them. It's like the exact same thing. So I made this. So I had the class, cast glass for me, and then glass are fingers, which is, of course, for working, eyes for knowing, and penises for procreation. <laughs> Now the great thing about uh, doing penises is that you're in the studio only with men. And I brought in a wooden piece. I, I brought in, boy, Leslie. I brought in a penis candle that Leslie bought me. <laughs> she needed it too. Yes. Yes. She she Any studio where you're the only woman 
and he'll like bring in a penis or some kind of something <laughs> that forces them to rethink what they're doing, how they approach it. I'm body, so I, you know, I can give as good as I get. Now, here's the thing about what I do. I try never to uh, sacrifice the glory of my craftsmanship for context. Mm -hmm. Now, I've made things in the past when I was younger. It's meant to fall apart. It was really meant to fall apart. You don't say, you know, it falls apart. You say, well, it's supposed to fall apart. <laughs> <laughs> I really made things that were meant to fall apart. We'll go back, in fact, that 15-foot uh, Harry Tubman I told you about, we made it out of dirt so that she would slowly disappear, like her memory in the past. You know, she's happy now, but she'll go back in the past again. <laughs> they made her so well that I think they came out at night and knocked her over. <laughs> had to persuade her to leave after. Because she's like, I'm hurt. <laughs> but you leave. And as she, she was really made out of uh, this dirt and this combo, this recipe. And as she would lose weight, she lost, she got thinner and thinner, and her arms got stronger. She was holding like a 15-foot gun made out of plastics and glass, right? And so she's holding, it's, it was beautiful. Uh, so even in those pieces, I tried, oh wait, her body was covered in beadwork and graffiti. So even in those pieces, I try not to sacrifice my ability as a craftsman. It's real work, it's hard work. It's, it's meant to be loved because of that amount of time spent in making it. Uh, so that's one thing I don't do. So when you see the blue piece, I expect you to do this. Oh my god, wow, <laughs> that's amazing. It's another thing about me, since y'all won't ask me nothing. Uh, I, I'm pretty humble. <laughs> That's hard to believe. I'm incredibly humble. I just don't have, what did you say? That's hard to believe. <laughs> I, do, I do, I'm incredibly humble. I just don't have false humility. Humidity, humility. <laughs> or humidity, I don't have false. So if I've done something good job, yeah, I'm happy about it. I'm not gonna go through it because that's not true. I just took 150,000 hours making that. Do you really believe I'm going to go, you really like it? <laughs> no. I don't have that kind of false humility because I come from people who couldn't be who I am right now, who opened that door for me to come through. And I, I wear them very proudly and I'm really very proud to be someone who's carrying this. You ask for music, this is what I think when I look at this one right off the bat. You got a smile so bright, and I know you could have been a candle. I'm holding you so tight, he's wearing an ascot. You know you could have been a handle. The way you swept me off my feet, you bit, you could have been a broom. You wear your smell so sweet, you know, yeah, you could have been some perfume. Well, you could have been anything, mama, that you wanted to. And I can tell the way you do the things you do. Um, what's in the offering for you? You know, a knee operation. So I'm going to be going really, you know, doing lectures in different places around the country. I'm hoping to cut things off in September to have my knee operated on. I also have to lose weight before they can do it because you're too fat, Joyce. Thank you, Doc. And then that allowed me to get back up, maybe do some more performance. I'm going to be doing a performance at uh, the Peel Museum on June the 21st, where I'm just going to be doing music and telling stories. That's what they ask, because the Peel has a real storytelling. So you're a griot at this time? So I'm a griot? A griot. I, I have 
often call that and I um, wear that uneasily because when you meet real grills, you're like, oh man, I, I wish I could be that. But, you know, I did theater for many years with Kate Wall. We were the Thunder Thigh Review. And then I did, I've done a lot of stuff. And I'd like to get back to doing more music and maybe a little writing. So you like music? You like performing as a musician for a very long time and a singer for many years. What's your instrument? My voice. My voice. So you hit your chest and all that stuff. Okay. All right. I'm, I'm learning about all the things that you've done. You have a fascination about South America. Tell me more about that. Well, it's just that it's more Central America. I went to Peru. It is more that we don't know how influential Africans were to all of these areas. We forget where the Spanish and Portuguese went. They brought slaves. Yes. yes. So that has influenced the culture in there. Why were you so fascinated with that part of America? I think because it's close. Yeah. I can leave the United States and go throughout Central America, go to South America, and it's right there. And it's and we are influenced by them because they own this place once. Yeah, so Mexicans and Guatemalans, all of these people, that rich history is what this is based on. But the language is Spanish and Portuguese. That's the colonized language, yes. their original languages, which many of them still speak, not that. But why not Spanish? I mean, English is not an African Yeah, but you had to, you had to, you had to become conversant. Yeah, you had to become conversant. You had to become conversant. See, one of the things about us, if we can do it bondage, we can speak anything.